finally. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, babe, guess who's gonna be allowed back in the break room at work? When I have to wear pants, which is tragically most of the time, yeah, I'm basically wearing true specs. Just ask my wife. Uh, everywhere we go, basically, I am wearing uh, true spec pants or shorts like you see right here. These are the 24 seven uh, lightweight shorts right here. Why do I like these? Well, actually there are a bunch of reasons. We're gonna take a look at some of the options right here. I've talked about the basic true spec pants in the past. If you get these on sale, these can run actually about 30 bucks, so they are uh, quite a good value. Um, they're not gonna uh, break the bank if you get a couple pairs of these. Uh, the shorts as well, sometimes you can actually find these for about 25 bucks a pair. And uh, I'm always looking for those sales. But yeah, these are very flexible as we're gonna see here in a bit. They're useful for a whole lot of things. We have also talked about the kind of uprated true spec expedition pants, which are quite a bit more expensive. These usually run, and yeah, they can be anywhere up like into the 90s, uh, anywhere from like 75 bucks if you get them on sale up into the 90s if they're on kind of regular price. But these, are really hardcore outdoor pants. These, uh, they have all kinds of uprated features, like I mentioned, like you have these big stretchy panels that breathe really well behind the knees and then right below the waistline. So you get a lot of the heat that you build up when you're out in the outdoors. It's just gonna go off you. And uh, one of the limitations that I've mentioned in the past with your basic 24 sevens is that they're a nice trim fit. They fit the leg really neatly. It's just a nice clean line. That's why I think a lot of folks use these for uniform pants, uh, like you know, law enforcement agencies are gonna uh, use this pant or one a lot like it. But these don't actually uh, flex all that well when it comes time to like maybe jump over a barbed wire fence like I've had to do in the past. Uh, if you wanna be able to you know, get over an obstacle like that, a lot of time you kinda of hike them up a little bit and then you can get over, just because it's, it's a little bit uh, restrictive in the crotchular region. And then this makes it so that, you know, here's the, the crotch area of the extreme pants or the expedition pants. And uh, yeah, you don't have to ever move. It's a nice trim leg again, but uh, it's just gonna move with you. You don't have to ever have to think about adjusting your pants as you're out uh, in the woods. And it also has kind of a form fitting leg so that uh, it's just kind of automatically built to flex with you as you move around. These are ultimate movement, but probably not the most uh, seemly when you're walking around uh, on your day-to-day your -day job or whatever. These look like tactical pants, because they really are. All kinds of vents and zippers and pockets and like this little hook that loops onto your uh, boot laces so that you can get a... Um, a kind of a gator feel and keep things from getting out into your boots or under your socks. But yeah, expensive pants. Now we get into today's pants. Uh, these split the difference between the two and I think these are ones to take a very serious look at. These right here are, these are called the ProFlex. And these take the basic formula that you get with uh, the regular 24 sevens you can get for about 30 and then they start adding some of the features that you get from the Expedition pants while keeping the price tag actually pretty low. For about 45 bucks probably, if you go out and look on Amazon or one of the other resellers, I'll put links down below, you are looking at a pant that includes that wonderful stretchy, a four-way stretchy material that's gonna breathe really well in those key areas. Uh, this one has just a little bit of a section right here behind the knee up through the crotch and then above the waistline. So these are going to move just about as well as the Expedition pants, but they're gonna do it, as you can see, a bit more discreetly. It's not so stark, you know, a, a tactical look about it. And uh, it's gonna come in at that lower price point. And this actually adds some interesting features. Come get a close look at what they've done with these. Let's start with the discussion of fabric. The fabric is gonna be the same on all of these, whether it's the Expedition pants, the basic 24 seven tactical pants or these pro flex, all of them are going to be made of this uh, rip stop poly cotton material. This is a 65 35 blend and it is just utterly brilliant. I have hardly damaged any of these. I have probably about 10 pairs between the shorts 
and the pants that I have. And uh, yeah, so far I've really only sustained two bits of damage, and I'm, I'm going to show you one of them here. Uh, this does not rip easily. The only pair that I have truly ripped out in the field or doing whatever, I actually caught uh, a pair of their kind of basic cargos that look more like kind of khaki pants that you could take to work. I caught it on a metal hook and I ripped about a one inch uh, slash in there. And so I, I don't wear those anymore because it was right on the butt, but uh, I might patch those up and still use them for outdoor work. But yeah, these still are very difficult. Uh, to either wear through or damage. And the fabric itself is impregnated with a Teflon coating so that it actually uh, kind of beads up water and really does a great job of resisting stains. This pair that you see right here, this old 24-7, uh, this basic model right here, you can see has some stains. I've got uh, one right here that's probably motor oil right there. Um, the knees have just a little bit of a, a lightness to them where it started to kind of wear through the color just a little bit. Uh, we have some damage around the knife pocket. You can see just a little bit of fraying there. And uh, a rip where uh, the, my dog actually snagged my knife on his leash and uh, kind of yanked it through here. So we do, have, okay, we do have a little bit more damage going on right here. These are probably about six years old and I have taken them into all kinds of brush and all kinds of terrain. And here is the most profound damage on this one. I'll show you the inside actually. Tore the crotch right out of this when I was bending down one time. Uh, the, uh, the, the stitches, I guess, had uh, gotten a little bit, um, a, a little bit loose, a, a little bit uh, weak in the UV and all that, but uh, yeah, these, these tore through and I, I'm gonna sew these up. I'm holding them together with duct tape right now and I, uh, as you can see, I probably don't wear these <laughs> very often. Uh, the green pair, which is actually slightly older than those, uh, these have no damage on them whatsoever, just a little bit of the, uh, the kind of color loss up here in some of the, uh, uh, these wear sections and right here around the pockets and I'll talk about that here in a second. But yeah, doing great. They are very tough. And if the Teflon coating stops working for a little bit, I've heard that you can just take a, a warm iron, pass it over it, and then you get some of that water resistance back. Uh, it should be a good persistent uh, water resistance going on here. Now, what about colors? I've shown you the Coyote Tan right here. This is multicam in the Expedition Pant. Not all of these come in a camo but they do have some that come in Marpat. Love Marpat in my area. We have the Ranger Green, which I pointed out right here. This is not like Olive Drab. This is a bit more of a bluish hue. This is kind of like what the sheriffs wear around in this area. So it doesn't look like the old, um, like Vietnam era Olive Green or anything. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bit more of a, that kind of brighter color. It does blend in really well, though. Uh, in general, for, with most of these pants, you're going to get navy blue, you're going to get black. Uh, khaki is very common, and then sometimes there's bone as well. I have a pair of bone shorts, and those show... Uh, they kind of look like normal cargo pants. They don't really look all that tactical, so I like uh, wearing those around for various things. Up top, the waistband is pretty trick. If you have a waistband that tends to expand and contract based upon uh, your eating habits or what uh, your exercise or what you've been doing or maybe what you've been wearing, uh, for example, a lot of time I like to put fleece bibs under these when it starts getting cold, um, this actually does have some stretch built into it. You can see that the waistband is kind of split right here, so you can expand and contract these pants and actually get different sizes out of them. You can probably get about a total of, oh, I don't know, two, two and a half inches of total travel around these. So if you wanna be able to put a pistol uh, here inside the waistband, these are going to accommodate it. And as long as your belt can handle the expansion, uh, the pants certainly can. The belt loops are thicker than normal. You can see that they are quite fat and there are quite a few of them all the way, all the way around. Uh, this model has seven all the way around, a little bit different than the normal pant that they have. And then it has one extra thick one here at the back, uh, which I think is quite nice because a lot of the time we're gonna get a little bit of extra tug at the back of the pants. And it's good to have this uh, uh, sitting here to be able to take up a little bit more of that. The snaps here, these are prim snaps and they are, 
I've never had one fail on me. They don't get loose. Uh, they seem to always work. The zippers, oh, and we do have a, a button on the inside here uh, to a, kind of that backup button first to make sure that everything lays really flat. And then also if the snap should ever come off and the zipper burst for some reason, okay, you got a little backup. But really these will not burst because this zipper is a nice metal YKK and I've never had one of these fail me. I actually have a super duper old, like a 1970s era sleeping bag that's missing teeth, but it's a YKK zipper, but it, and it still works on that sleeping bag. I use it as my shooting mat. You've probably seen it around. Pockets. This is where the the 24 7 series pants really start to shine you'll see that the cargo pockets for one thing lay nice and flat these are not bellows style they can kind of bellow out here on the back there's a little bit of expansion available but in general these are designed to just look really slim against the leg to lay nice and flat and not look like you're carrying all kinds of crap even though you actually are. But let me show you one extra trick with this. Allow me to show you a little something that you probably didn't know about the 24-7 pants because they don't really advertise this. There are accessory pockets within these large cargo pockets. They call them accessory pockets, but they just happen to fit 120 rounds of 223 ammunition and if you think that this is kind of an accident these little accessory pockets no 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 these are designed to hold these magazines it's a perfect fit yeah it fits your phone as well and in my case that's exactly where i put it i drop in, into one of these uh, interior pockets and it's really stable for movement. It's also really stable for these as well. And this is not just a party trick or for the LE guys. I have used these pockets with these magazines when I am out varminting because it's really quite handy to have uh, the ammunition. You know, you don't want to look all tactical when you're out trying to you know, whack prairie dogs or whatever. So I'm not wearing a vest or anything like that. I just dump these in the pockets and actually walking, running uh, is quite possible with these in there because they're held so neatly in place. I think it's a really cool uh, feature that they've put into these. And check out what they've done with the new model. The pockets on the Pro Flex retain that internal division on the inside. And you can see them right in there. These are the internal pockets where you can drop a mag. But check this out, the Expedition pant over here, instead of having those internal pockets, it had one external pocket that can fit a magazine just perfectly. This is one that you can very quickly access. All you have to do is just grab the top of your mag, yank it out and it's ready to go. And this sits deep enough and has, it's, it kind of sits in the right position. So it was never in any uh, you know, fear of the magazine flying out while we were running because we actually were running after the hogs on our last hunt and I had a, a magazine sitting inside this pocket. Uh, yeah, it didn't move at all and I was ready to whip it out and fire on the, uh, the next round of targets. But what they've done with the Pro Flex pant, I recommend it over here since this was on the right side. They probably should have moved it over to the left side uh, for us righties because we're going to be going down for the mag with our left hand. Well, on the Pro Flex, they put it on both sides. So you can see that behind the cargo pocket, you now have an extra mag pouch. And that's yeah on both sides in here. So this will be able to fit an AR-15 mag. Or if you want to be able to drop your cell phone in, it's going to fit that uh, very perfectly and be very quick to access. This I think is brilliant and one of the coolest things about the ProFlex. While we're on the subject of pockets, I do want to bring up some of the others on here because these are very well thought out. These aren't just little me too items that they tacked onto here. First on the back, you have an easy access pocket that just has a little flap right here. Uh, and you can put a wallet or whatever in there. But if you want your wallet to actually be secure on the other side, we have another YKK zipper. Uh, this one is a nylon instead of uh, metal right here. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to sit on, I imagine. This is a lot like what comes on the Expedition pant. And then we have, okay, for me, my everyday carry, depending on what I'm doing, is probably going to look like keys, uh, pistol, it could be a pocket knife. That's a big one. That's a rat, uh, a rat one from Ontario. 
And then this is a Phoenix LD22, pretty big 2AA flashlight. I have my phone, a wallet, and all of this stows really easily inside here. First off, these little knife pockets are definitely big enough to handle a medium-sized flashlight like this one that uh, stows very easily in there. And I can see that they've kind of opened it up a little bit. These, uh, in the past, I think have been a little bit smaller. And yeah, fits really neatly in that one. On the other side, this is where I usually put my Rat 1. So yeah, it's a pretty big folder. It fits in there uh, quite nicely. A lot of those folding tactical knives are gonna fit very easily inside that space. For the front pockets, these are the slash kind, so they're gonna be really easy to get your hands into. Um, it's you know good for keeping your hands warm if you need to. And then it's also perfect for accessing a, a pocket-mounted pistol. This is how I pretty much always carry is in the pocket. Quick to access, it doesn't really show up, it doesn't bother my hips. Uh, I just don't like an in the waistband holster. I'll probably talk about that in another video, but this is the way that I like to carry and it's actually quite quick on the draw. It's easy to get this out of here and it's completely concealed. This is not the smallest carry pistol in the whole wide world. This is a Taurus Millennium. Uh, this is their, not their G2 model. This is the one that came just before that. I like this one better actually. Uh, but this is a double stack. It holds 12 rounds. It's a little bit on the heavy side, which is what I like. And you can see that it stows completely inside that pocket. Easy to put a wallet wherever you want, if it's a back pocket or one of the cargos like you saw earlier. And then we do have these accessory pockets right here. And I think in the past, uh, folks were using these, you could probably use these for pistol mags, some of the smaller ones. You could put uh, maybe one of those little pistol mag carriers inside here because they did widen this. The previous version was a good bit narrower, maybe another inch narrower. And maybe you could put a small phone or something, but I think you can get quite a bit more in here. Not tall enough for the modern phones if you have one of the big iPhones or something. Not gonna fit in there, probably for this internal pocket. Some of the other weird things on this, uh, in the past with some of the, uh, the 24 sevens, you have this great big section right here where you can put flexible knee pads, internal knee pads. And these are common on a lot of the tactical pants. You kind of have a little hidden pocket inside the leg where you can put it. The Expedition has it, the kind of classic 24 seven has it. These are just double reinforced. They're, as far as I can tell, there's no pocket to slide it into. I haven't been able to detect anything yet anyway. Uh, normally there is a little, oh no, there it is, I found it. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. I was feeling around for this earlier, but I just found it. There it is, that is the aperture where you can slide in a flexible knee pad. So there you go, you have all the good stuff that came on the original 24-7, plus all of the upgrades. This fabric, we talked about the, uh, the ripstop fabric over here at first, but now I wanna talk about this stuff. I was not really expecting all that much from this. It's a flexible, you know, kind of spandexy sort of fabric. It looks really nice, it's very matte. But, uh, you know, and it does breathe really well if you're outdoors, I have tried it. It's great in all kinds of conditions, but I was expecting this to maybe not be so tough as this other fabric right here. And so far, this is defying me completely. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is going to last every bit as long as the ripstop poly cotton. We're gonna continue to test over time with backpacking and all kinds of things. But with, you know, weight in my pack, and all kinds of accessories and slings and all kinds of things, I cannot seem to damage this. Uh, it just seems to do its job really well, move perfectly, and yeah, it just, does, it just seems to keep on ticking. Oh right, I almost forgot. This is the other bit of damage that these pants have taken. Since I do carry a rather large pistol with metal sights in my pocket pretty much everywhere, including on very long hikes, the wear can get uh, pretty intense. These aren't so badly damaged, but it is starting to wear a little bit thin in here. And the way that I have been protecting these in the past is with these little uh, iron-on patches. You can see that I need to redo this one. And then I also have to put on the pockets. The pockets, since they are just cotton, a kind of a thin, comfortable cotton. Actually, I guess they're, they're pretty thick, but it's a nice, comfy cotton, like a t-shirt, sorta. 
and uh, these wear through actually pretty quickly and these I have to keep patched up at regular intervals. After about two years of use I found that I needed to start um, uh, patching these up and I've kind of gone more preemptive in the the recent past patching these before they actually start to wear through and it does help with <laughs> some of the wear that you see here. And hopefully this will protect the outside of the pants. If I can just keep the pocket from falling apart, I can keep the pants from falling apart. One more quick thing to point out. This shirt is also from True Spec. This is a new recycled material one that I'm gonna show off here. And I'm gonna actually use both of these in a hike here in the near future. I'm gonna be doing a nearly 27 mile hike through some pretty brutal wilderness. Uh, with some friends and it's it has a lot of up and down whoever designed this trail did not really know what switchbacks were this goes straight up mountains and then pretty much straight down and this is going to be a good test of clothing and gear and keeping everything really light because not only are we going to hike this uh, distance we're going to do it in about 12 hours we're going to see how that goes it's going to be tough and uh, we'll see how all of these add up. Hopefully this will keep me, even though it's gonna be mid-October in Oklahoma and Arkansas, that doesn't really add up to much. It could still be around 90 degrees and we'll see how these function. In short, pants. If you have to wear them, wear true spec. I think I should make that the corporate slogan. Thank you to everybody that has made videos like these possible. Thank you to TrueSpec for actually sending the pants out for me to test. They know that I like their stuff and I've been buying their stuff for a good long time. So hey, they sent me some new ones to play with and I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks to patrons of the Destructive Arts that keep videos like these rolling out. Um, thank you to Sportsman's Guide at the 338 Lapua Magnum level and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum level, Peter at the 300 Win Mag level, and if anybody else wants to uh, pitch in a buck or two a month to keep some of these uh, scope reviews, uh, tactical gear reviews, all kinds of fun stuff. If you want to keep these coming, yeah, a buck or two a month can sure help out. I'll put a link to Patreon down below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell because we have all kinds of stuff coming out that's going to be really exciting in a totally different direction. Uh, and I'm, I'm really curious to see how it's all going to work out. It's going to be good fun. We're going to learn some interesting things and I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.